On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. Um, the title of this uh, Sunday School lesson this morning is Return to Love and Justice. Glory to God, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We pray that everyone that's online this morning receives all that you have for them to receive. We're going to go into the Holy Scriptures and we're going to start with Hosea, um, the 11th chapter, the first through the second verse. And then we're going to alternate through our lesson. I'm going to ask the class for participation. Amen. Hosea, the 11th chapter. The first through the second verse, mm -hmm. and then the seventh through the tenth verse, and then we're going to move to the twelfth chapter, the first through the second verse, and then the sixth through the fourteenth verse. Okay. Amen? Amen. I start reading Hosea, the eleventh chapter, the first through the second verse. I read, it says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. As they called them, so they went from them. Thou sacrificed unto Balaam, and burned incense to graven images. The seventh verse says, And my people are bent to backsliding from me. Though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together. Man, the ninth verse says, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. The 10th verse. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. The 12th verse, 12th chapter, the first verse says, Ephraim feedeth on wind and falleth after the east wind. He daily increases lives and desolation. And they do, do make a covenant with the Assyrians, and oil is carried into Egypt. The second verse. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, and will punish Jacob according to his ways. According to his doings will he recompense him. The sixth verse says, Therefore turn thou to thy God, keep mercy and judgment, and wait on thy God continually. He, Seventh verse. He is a merchant. The balances of deceit are in his hand. He loveth to oppress. And Ephraim said, Yet I am become rich. I have found me out substance in all my labors. They shall find none iniquity in me that were sin. And I that am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of the solemn feast. I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Is there iniquity in Gilead? Surely they are vanity. They sacrifice bullocks in Gilgal. Yea, their altars are as heaps in the pharaohs of the fields. And Jacob fled into the country of Syria, and Israel served for a wife, and for a wife he kept sheep. And by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. Ephraim provoked him to anger most bitterly. Therefore shall he leave his blood upon him, and his reproach shall his Lord return unto him. Glory to God. Thank God for the reading of his word this morning. Amen. We're talking about return to love. Amen. And justice. It's a wonderful thing uh, to return to love and justice. When we acknowledge the imputed sin by one man into the world. Amen. To return. Amen. To return. Amen. To return to love 
and justice. And hey, we see here this morning in this wonderful lesson, amen, a, uh, a day old adage, amen, one that some of us can relate to today, amen, and one that has kind of evolved and um, maintained its state throughout time, amen. I'm talking about where it is that man, amen, transgresses against God, but we see God's mercy, we see God's love for his creation, amen, leaving room, leaving hope. Amen. Leaving a means, amen, to return, amen, if man chooses to, amen. A lot of time we find out in the culture today, amen, as though then, amen, regardless to the excuse, amen, we see there were some things going on in the context of gaining wealth, amen, and their relationships, amen, with the culture, amen, to gain wealth, amen, and their independence, amen, in themselves, amen, excluding God, amen, for the things that they had gained, amen. Well, to return. When I look at the title of the lesson this morning, return means to go or come back. Amen. That implies that we see Israel, amen, had gone away from God. Amen. They had done some things, amen, and had began some practices, amen, that were outside, amen, that excluded God. We see love. I love when I see the word love. I love, I love, I love First John. Amen. The fourth chapter in the eighth version, it says, he that loveth, uh-huh, not knoweth not God, for God is love. Amen. I want to say it again. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Amen. Amen. For God is love. What I'm trying to say to you, a lot of time we look for love in all the wrong places. Amen. To know love, amen, and to express love beyond a feeling, amen, it requires a true relationship with God. One that is in such a manner that you find yourself, amen, submit, submitted to the living God, amen. You find yourself doing things that please the Lord, amen, and not yourself. And then we see here justice. We see return to love. We see a return to God, amen. What I said is they moved away from God. So I'm just talking about the title of the lesson. It says return to love and justice. And when we see the word justice, we see a formal utterance of authority. Amen. Or opinion. Amen. So what I'm talking about returning to God's statues. Amen. Returning to God's way. Returning to God's desire. Returning to give God glory in all the things that we do say. And think, amen, in Matthew 28, chapter in the 18th verse says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, uh -huh, authority, amen, is given unto me in heaven and in earth, amen. I said that justice, a formal utterance, amen, of an authoritative opinion. I'm, what I'm establishing here is that God has all authority. Jesus has all power bestowed in his hand, amen. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter and the 10th verse says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Amen. We all will hold account for the things that we've done in this body or by the authority. And I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. The author here today, we see Hosea. It's very interesting and we, we're looking right now, we're reading and we're over in the 11th chapter, but to really embrace and understand and kind of see what's going on here, you really have to read the story about Hosea, starting from the first chapter. I'm not going to go through the whole story, I'm going to give you the cliff notes, but I will encourage you to go and read and really stay with the story about Gomer. As we see Hosea, a prophet of the Old Testament, at a time where the Divided kingdom we see here. I'm talking about Israel and Judah, you know, Israel in the north. Amen. And we see um, the capital being Samaria and we see Judah in the south. Amen. Where we see the capital being Jerusalem. We see that the prophet uh -huh, of God, I'm talking about the one that God chose. Amen. We understand that the, God, the prophet only is supposed to speak that which comes from God. Amen. Amen. He's directed in all that he does from the Lord, not himself. Amen. Not like some of the ones we see today amen it's all about bringing God glory in, the, in our background here when we see Hosea in our background we understand that Hosea's uh, uh, 
state of being. I'm talking about his family state of being, his, his uh, physical state of being, his emotional state of being, the things that represent it, we see here in that parallel, uh, the relationship uh, that God had with Israel, amen? I'm talking about the relationship that Hosea had with his wife. We know that Gomer was a prostitute, amen? We understand that uh, God instructed Hosea, amen, over in one and two, to take a whore as a wife, demonstrating the faithless actions of Israel towards God. The Bible says the people had departed from God, amen? And we know that Gomer, she left on many occasions, and we know that Jose had to go out and get her, amen? It doesn't say how long she stayed, but we see here the culture. On many occasions, we see the culture would whore with other gods, amen? They would mess around and they would leave, they would backslide, amen? They would depart from the Lord, amen, for their own desires, amen, uh, for their own way, amen? We also know that Hosea bore a son, amen, Jezreel, after the city, which was the scene uh -huh, of Jehu's brutality and which signified that God would punish his people. In 2 Kings and 9th chapter, God's judgment, you can see there. And also he had a daughter, amen, his daughter, Laruhama, uh, say not pitied, amen. Loami, we see another daughter here where it says, uh, and it represents not my people, signifying the estrangement which was the result of Israel's idolatry. We see God's love illustrated in Hosea's willingness uh -huh, to take his wife back from the practice of holotry. Can we see how God uh, today and also then uh, he leaves room and hope, amen, for us if we would just turn, amen, uh, from our wicked ways, amen, and we, we should just humble ourselves, amen, and we should seek, amen. We see that he, he made room and we see here the parallel between Hosea and Gama on one hand and we see Israel and God on the other hand, glory to God. We must remember that it wasn't acceptable then and it's not acceptable now, amen. Where it is that we know the laws were inscribed on tablets, we know as believers those laws, same laws are inscribed on our hearts today. Remember in Exodus, the 20th chapter, and the third verse it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, amen. It didn't say some, it didn't say the ones that you choose to hold on to. The Bible says, it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Amen. In existence, God is saying, amen, you cannot put anything before him. Amen. Thou shalt not bow down. I'm in the fifth verse. Bow, thy, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, it says. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Man, that's strong right there. Who says that they hate the Lord? Amen. Who, who, you know, who forms their mouth to say that they hate the Lord? We see here God says uh, he's not going to have it. Amen. He says he's a jealous God. Amen. In Hosea, the fourth chapter, the first and the second verse, we see it says, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath has a, what? Controversy, amen, with the inhabitants of the land. Uh, I heard somebody back there, I heard, I thought, is that pastor in the back? He said, controversy. See, he had an issue, amen, with something that was in opposition, we see here, of God's word, amen. He had a controversy against the inhabitants of the land. We're establishing something here. They just didn't end up this way. It, it just, it's, not, it's not by happenstance, amen that we see Israel is in the state that they're in, where it is that they should return to love and justice. I'm establishing something. Uh -huh. They had transgressed against God, amen. It says the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Because what the Lord said in the, in the, in the um, fourth verse, it says the Lord said because there is no truth. Uh -huh. The Hosea, the fourth chapter, the first and the second verse. Yes, go ahead. The first and the second verse. Hear the Lord, hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. For the Lord 
have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land mm -hmm. because there is not truth nor mercy nor knowledge of God in the land. Second verse, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Amen. Can you see those same things are parallel in, uh, in our society today? Amen. We see where there is no truth. Amen. People, they like facts. They like to play with facts all day long. Amen. They like, oh, we got like a society full of uh, what I call lawyers. Amen. Mm -hmm. We want to play with facts. I'm talking about the truth. Amen. Because I can take a fact and twist it and use it in the wrong way. And my point here is it's no longer true. Amen. We see here that in our society today, we see folks, they lack mercy. Amen. And they uh, lack what we call the knowledge of God. Amen. I'm talking about those that reject the truth, amen. amen. It's not that when we see the knowledge of God, it's not that they were not presented, amen. This represents a rejection of the word of God, amen. We see where folks, they swear by anything today, amen. We see where folks, I mean, they're liars, amen. And we understand that Satan was a liar from the beginning, amen. 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 And we understand that if you find yourself in that state, that's your father. We see folks that are killing, amen. We have riots going on, amen, in our streets today, amen. Protests going on in our streets today because of senseless, we call killing, amen. Uh, we see where there's no mercy, amen. Anytime that you can treat someone, amen, inhumane, amen, we see where man has become merciless, amen. Man has become a, what we call vain, amen, in our actions. I'm talking about the state of our society. It says in stealing, amen, we see rioting, amen, and we see things that's going on. We see um, committing adultery, amen. Not only do we see the committing adultery literally, well, we look here in Jose and Gama, we're talking background here today. Uh, we see here that uh, there's a adultery that's committed against God, amen, where it is that we would speak or do anything outside of God, it's adultery, amen. Glory to God. But let's go into uh, chapter 11, amen. We see our background here. Uh, we see Israel, amen, where Israel had began to serve other gods, amen. And we see Israel had began to serve their own purpose. Chapter, chapter 11, the first verse says what? When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. And we see love here implies, amen, the Lord had blessed Israel economically, uh-huh, and numerically. Uh, we see multiplying them, amen. You can reference that, amen, in Exodus, amen, the uh, first chapter, amen, the 6th through the 10th verse, man. But I want you to go to Matthew, the second chapter, in the 15th verse, we see out of Egypt. We see here, uh, have I called my son? We see here, as it's referenced in the first verse of the 11th chapter of Hosea, the same words are quoted by Matthew and applied to Jesus, amen. Israel and Jesus were alike in the uh, bother where that the objects of the love of the Father, both were called my son, amen, and both were in Egypt, glory to God. We see here that, I love it, say, when Israel was a child. We see here... You know, children, when they start out, you know, when your, your kids and they're one year old and two year old, let's go back to yourself, amen. You remember when you were innocent, amen. You remember where you would just follow instructions and you would just do what you were told to do. But at some point, amen, along the way, amen, you began to gain a consciousness outside of what you were being instructed to do, amen. And then you see here, just like in a child, amen, you see the rebellion, amen. We see a rebellion, amen. It's not that many don't start out, amen, in the right way. It's about how you end up, amen. Glory to God. So many give uh, their resume, amen. I heard a man, don't give your resume. There's no need, just live a life unto God, amen. They give a resume, it's not about how you start, it's how you end up, amen. Where are you today, amen? We all should do a self-examination, amen. Where are we today in the context of loving our God? Where are we at today in the context, amen, of living by his statutes? Where are we in the context, amen, of putting away pride, amen? Where are we in the context of not trying to share the glory of God, amen. God says he shares his glory eh, with no one. Amen. We see here when Israel, it says, was a child. 
He said, then I, I'm talking about the father, amen, loved. I'm talking about had affection, amen, uh-huh, mm -hmm. loved him and called my son. I'm talking about Israel out of Egypt. Can you see Israel coming out of Egypt, amen, being delivered, amen? Glory to God. And you know, as I begin to speak in Matthew, how not only did they come out of Egypt, they prospered, amen? Don't forget where you came from, amen? Amen. Embrace where you are. Amen. Don't hold on. Some of us, when I say don't forget, some of us need to forget where we came from, depending on the context that you're using it. Amen. We can't hold on to those old ways, that old mindset. Amen. I'm talking about the things when I say don't forget the things that God has blessed you, the Holy Spirit with. I'm talking about deliverance. I'm talking about when the spirit enabled you to get beyond that sickness. Amen. And you were crying out to God. I'm talking about when you were down and out. Amen. And you felt there was no other hope, amen. And you cried out to the Lord and he answered your cry, amen. And he heard you, amen. Glory to God. And he came to your rescue. Let us not forget so soon where God has bought us from. We can see Israel, they forgot real soon where God had bought them from. The deliverance, amen, I'm talking about. Amen. I'm talking about the presence, amen, of the Holy Spirit. He says, as they called them in the second verse. So they went from them. They sacrificed unto Balaam and burned incense to graven images. Let's talk about that. It says, as they called them, uh -huh, they, namely, we see it monitors and sent by me. We see it suggests the idea of many subsequent calls by the prophets. We know that God sent his prophets over and over and over and over and over and over again, amen, glory to God. We're going to continue on with that. We talk about, it says, went from them. We understand that that means turned away in contempt, amen. You can also reference that in Jeremiah, the second chapter, the 27th verse. And then we see Balaam here mentioned, it says, images of Balaam set up in various places, amen. Say, the Lord displayed his love toward the nation by summoning her from Egypt. Mm -hmm. You can reference that in Deuteronomy 2, 7 and 8, also Hosea 12 and 9. However, when God subsequently called them, uh -huh, mm -hmm, find that, I'm, talking, I'm in 11 and 2 right now, to covenant obedience through his prophets, the people rejected him, amen? You can reference that in Jeremiah the 7th chapter, the 25th through the 26th verse. And turn instead to false gods, Amen. Go to, go to Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, uh-huh, in the, 20, the 25th through the 26th verse, amen. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, the 25th through the 26th verse, amen. While you're going there, I'm going to read Hosea 12 and 9. Hosea 12 and 9 says, And I, that am the Lord thy God, from the land of Egypt, will yet make thee to dwell in tabernacles as in the days of of the solemn feast. So we understand that God had called them to prosper, but go ahead and read Jeremiah 7, 25 and 26. Jeremiah 7, 25 says, since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me. They hearkened what? Not unto me. Uh-huh nor inclined their ear, mm -hmm. but hardened their neck, they did worse than their fathers. We see that they hardened their necks. They did not incline, amen, to the word, amen, that was sent by God, amen. We understand, amen, from our study that they did everything, amen, according to that which was in their hearts, amen. They had nothing to do with the Lord, amen. Be mindful, folks. I'm like, you know, I'm just, just follow your heart, baby. Do what's in your heart. No, you need to do what God's telling you to do amen you need to do what God has already directed us to do in the word of God we have to do what God is directing us to do right now amen not just what's in your heart according to your own will and your own, your own desire because it feels good to you amen God is more than a feeling amen I say again God is more than a feeling go to second Kings amen in 17th chapter in the 16th verse Second Kings, the 17th chapter, and the 16th verse. Mm-hmm.
Second Kings 17th chapter mm -hmm. in the 16th verse, and it reads, And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, and served Baal. So can we see why it is that Israel needs to return to love? You see why Israel needs to return to God, amen? I'm established. They need to return because we see here where it is that they had left all the commandments, it says, of the Lord their God. And made them molten images, it says, even calves and made a grove and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal, amen. We see here why it is that they need to return, amen. And say we have to evaluate ourselves where it is that have we moved away from God, amen. Have we started doing things that does not please God, amen? I didn't say that God hadn't chosen you, amen. I'm talking about where you are right now, glory to God. What are you doing for God right now, amen? Or have you, are you humbling yourself to the Lord right now? Am I doing all the things that he's calling me to do right now, amen? Which brings me to a wonderful question. Why do men reject the truth, i.e. the word slash God? This is to the class. Why do you believe? Why do you believe men reject the truth, i.e. the word slash God? The Bible declares that men love darkness rather than light because of deeds of evil. Uh huh. Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, go ahead, Pastor. I heard you say something there. Go ahead. So the Bible declared that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. You know, so that's one reason why. So they, they love darkness. Rather than light because their deeds are evil. And then another reason they reject God, we have Demas as an example. Uh, where Paul talks about how Demas left the faith, left the ministry, having a love for the world. You know, folks will reject the truth because they have a love for the world. And everything. So, um, so let's go to John three and nineteen. And so, so when you when you look at First uh, Timothy four mm -hmm. and uh, ten, it says, "For Demas hath forsaken me, mm -hmm. having loved this present world." Amen. So, folks forget forsake God and reject God because their love and their passion is not towards God, God. just like it was in our lesson text this morning, as you mentioned. As you mentioned, I was listening to you on my way in. When God told Hosea to go out to Gomer, Gomer was representing the church. Amen. They went a whoring after other gods. Hallelujah. You know, they didn't want the true and living God. They Glory went a whoring after other gods. And we do the same thing. Want that popcorn. Um, I call it misplaced affection. Amen. You know, and so our affection, and the Bible says, set your affection on things above and not on things as earth. You know, so they have misplaced affection. And so we find that even in the world today, people have misplaced affections. Misplaced affection. I always say, you know, God is more than a feeling. A lot of times folks, they're seeking a feeling when it is that you should be seeking God. Amen. What does John 3 and 19 say? Yeah, I got it. Here it says. John 3 and 19 reads, and this is the command." The condemnation that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen. Amen. As the pastor, uh, he mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, men love darkness. Amen. I'm talking about you just have to look in the mirror and be honest. Amen. Sometimes folks, I'm like, God, he's still working on me. Yeah, God, he's still working on you. All right. God done done everything that needs to be done and whatever it is that he's given you, he's enabled you and, 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 and um, uh, giving you the capability to negotiate because he always makes provision for that which he purposed, amen. If he purposed you to do something, God's made provision, amen, for you to do it, amen. But some of us, we use, we got all kinds of excuses and reasons why. But my Bible tells me that men love darkness rather than light. That's one of the reasons I believe, amen, that men reject the truth, i.e. the word slash God. I have another question. It says it comes from our text. Who is the they in this passage? Mm -hmm. You say, who is the they? It says in the second verse, it says, as they call them. Who is they? We just talked about it. They refers to. 
the many prophets that God sent to the children of Israel to call them to repent. Amen. Many folks have come to us and given us the word. I'm talking about the truth. Amen. I'm not talking about facts. A lot of folks like to doodle around in, in, in facts and education is great, but I will tell you that education is limited. Amen. Um, your, uh, your aptitude, amen, is, is, is great, but it's limited without God. Uh -huh. I know somebody, they got offended because they have a certificate on the wall and they figured they know it all. But we find out that uh, it's limited without God. Your experience, we find out, is limited. You cannot experience everything. You cannot know every. I cannot know everything. Amen. But I can know what it is that God has deposited. Amen. I can know what's in his word that he allows me to discern. Amen. For his glory. Amen. And not my own. But we find out that we take the word of God and use it for our own accord. Amen. You find out that you're limited because now you find yourself only doodling around with facts. Amen. And um, you're neglecting what I call the truth. So in the passage here where it is, it says as they call them. We're talking about the many prophets that God sent to the children of Israel uh -huh, to call them to repent. Amen. And I'm talking about the turn, amen, from their wicked ways. I'm talking about the turn from their worship of Baal. Amen. We see here, I got another question for the class. It says, what does the hope of the Messiah offer to the future of the people of Israel? Wow. What does the hope of the Messiah offer? offer uh -huh, to the future of the people of Israel? One of the answers pr to your prior question, brother teacher, come from brother Perry. He says, because men do not have dominance over their flesh. Amen. Going to your previous question. Amen. 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 You need the Lord. Amen. We need the Lord. Amen. And all, man, because a lot of times folks are, you know, it's, I, I love that, uh, Brother Perry here said, we find folks that we got these all these self-help books. I'm going to tell you, there's only one book that you need, and that's the Bible, amen. I say, we got all these self-help books. Those books are great, amen, but those books are limited. It's a limited view, I call it, amen. But if you want an absolute view, amen, of greatness, you want to have an absolute view of a solution, amen, you want an absolute view, amen, of direction, I encourage you, amen, to read your Bible, amen, because many... Today, we find ourselves in what we call self-help books, self-help ideas, amen, and limited doodling around with intellects and phrases and things of this nature to get us by. And then you'll find folks and they'll say, well, I'm just trying to get myself right. I'm working on it. Amen. And you got some of us who call ourselves saints and we're still making New Year's resolution. Well, I encourage you to make a resolution to be obedient to God today. I, make, I encourage you to make a resolution to follow the statutes of God today. Make a resolution that in regardless to my fallible state that I'm just going to love God and submit, to, submit myself to him and all that I am. And that's enough for me. Amen. I encourage you. Amen. Go to Galatians, the third chapter and the 24th verse. And then we're going to go to Acts, mm -hmm, the fourth chapter and the 12th verse. Mm -hmm, Galatians 3 and 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Amen. We are justified by faith. We have to get out of the mindset, amen, where it is that we're law-abiding citizens. I'm talking about we have to be a law-abiding citizens according to the culture. But I'm talking about doodling around with facts, amen, doodling around with the word of God. We live by faith. And in Jesus Christ, amen, there's hope, amen, there's salvation, amen. We have to get beyond, amen, the practices of the old way. I'm talking about the cultural practices that covered and um, that they were uh, encapsulated in. You're free. Amen. Go to Acts, the fourth chapter and the twelfth verse. The mm -hmm. Acts 4 and 12 reads, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. What I'm trying to say is we have to stop searching in the wrong place for the right thing. Some of us, we're, we're looking for peace, but we're continuing to look in the wrong place for the right thing. We're looking for strength, 
but we're looking in the wrong place for the right thing. We're looking for a word, but we're looking in the wrong place for the right thing. We're just looking all over the place. Just pick your Bible up. Uh huh. Just hold your head up. Just right now, have a conversation with the Lord. Amen. You don't have to wait until we open up. You don't have to wait until, you know, the pandemic is over. You can have a conversation with the Lord right now. Amen. You can receive your healing right now. Amen. Right now. Amen. Glory to God. But it requires, amen, for us to look in the right place for the right thing. We need to look to Jesus, amen, for everything, amen. We need to look to the Lord, amen. Lord, the Lord is our strength. The Lord is our help, amen. We need to look to God, amen. We need God in everything, amen, not just some things. We limit God. We try to do things ourselves, and when it don't work out, then we find ourselves staring at the mirror. Why it didn't work out? Duh. You did doing the same thing you did last year. You did the same thing you did two years ago. You're doing the same thing you did five years ago. You still stuck on these self-help things we call it, uh, trying to fix yourself. What I'm trying to say, saints, I encourage you, take it to the Lord, amen. Hallelujah, take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's go to the seventh verse, amen. The seventh verse of Hosea in the 11th chapter says, and my people, are bent to backsliding from me. Mm -hmm. They bent. Uh huh. Though they called them to the most high, none at all would exalt him. Though they called them to the you know most high, none it says at all would exalt him. I'm saying God saying we have to get beyond rituals. We got to get beyond practices. Amen. Bent. Mm hmm. Bent means to habituate. Make or become accustomed. They became accustomed to backsliding, amen. You know how some folks, they in this week, they back next week. Then, you know what I'm saying, they out next week and they gone the next week. They had become accustomed to backsliding, amen, to, or be, to become accustomed. Uh huh. Backsliding means to turn away, amen. So I'm going to say it again. You got some just like then, you know, they become accustomed. It becomes a habit. Amen. Habituate. They become cut, become accustomed to just turning away. Amen. Glory to God. Even when the Lord called Israel to repentance through his prophets, they refused to repent. Go to Jeremiah, the seventh chapter in the 26th verse. Yes, sir. So uh, when you say they are bent on backsliding from me. So you're saying they they just very determined to do what they want to do then. Amen. Very determined, amen, to do what they want to do. They were consistent, amen. Amen. Uh, bent means to become accustomed. When you become accustomed to something, I mean, it's a continuous practice. It's something that you, I mean, it's not, it's not like a, uh, something that just happens, you know, uh, you know, it's an isolated event, amen. Yeah. Arbitrarily, it just kind of shows up. No, this is something when it says that you're bent, amen, there's some effort toward this thing, amen. So, so, they, so they had a knack of doing this. Oh, they had a knack of it, amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. John 3 and 19, I want to read it again. It says, and this is the condemnation, amen, um, that light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. Amen. I loved your, your answer earlier because men love darkness rather than light. Amen. amen. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter and 26 verse says, we'll come back to it. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. In the 26th verse. 7 and 26 it says, Yet they hearkened un not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck. They did worse than their fathers. Amen. Harden their necks. Just running around their necks just hard. <laughs> now you speak to some folks, man, they can't even move their neck when they look at you. When they look at you, look at you kind of sideways like this. <laughs> <laughs> It's like they got a crick in their neck. There's nothing wrong with the neck, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Go ahead. I know you, um, did we have something there? Yes, I have something. One of the girls says that we as a whole have been conditioned to believe man's law supersedes God's law. Amen, amen, amen. And that's what we find ourselves. Many folks today, they continue, amen. I believe that there's an awakening going on. They're continuing to search in the wrong place for the right thing. See, Man under God, we see where it is that there's nothing that man can do that's righteous if it does not glorify the Father. 
So it's not about the glorification of man. Man you know, want to be king, but there's only one king in my life, and that's the Lord, amen. Man say it's not about the glorification of man. It's not the glory, it's not about the practices. I may mention earlier that God is more than a feeling, amen. God is more than we coming in and having an emotional, what I call event. I mean, it's a, uh, coming in and have what we call an emotional ploy, amen, to God. And you cry your eyes out. God sees your heart, amen. God is more than a feeling, amen. You feel some kind of way when you go to the movies and you watch a tearjerker. You feel some kind of way. Uh, you feel some kind of way when you meet the uh, love of your life, amen. You feel some kind of way. I'm talking about, we're not just a feeling, amen, on the outside. I'm talking about something that's deep down on the inside. I'm talking about conversion. When you meet the living God, you find out that at that time you become complete, amen. Amen. And that's why many of us, we continue to search today. And we don't understand why and what we're searching for, amen. And we keep going from person to person, church to church, city to city. We all over the place, amen, because we're searching in the wrong place for the right thing, amen. You're not going to find that, that yearning, that, 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 the, the, the satisfaction for that yearning that's on the inside of you in the culture, amen. You're going to have to go back uh, to the uh, beginning, amen. You're going to have to go back to where you came from. Amen. We vote. We all started out as a spirit. Amen. You're going to go have to go back. Amen. To the state that God desires you to be in the purpose that God has purpose for his own glory for you to truly find happiness, for you to truly find joy, for you to truly feel complete. You had a comment? I have a question. So when uh, a person is bent on doing something or has a knack of doing whatever they want to do, from a biblical perspective, from a spiritual perspective, uh, what do we do in such cases uh, as leaders when we find that um, people are just bent on doing what they want to do, regardless of what the word says? What is our responsibility as you, you know your Sunday school superintendent? So, what is your what is your responsibility as a spiritual leader? You know, when you find that uh, there are just some that are bent on doing whatever they want to do. Continue to display the character of God. Where it is we see here, and that's why I mentioned earlier when, we looked at, when we're looking at this lesson and we see Hosea and Gama, we see and you just read about Gama and you see the things that Gama did against, we finally see you say against uh, her husband. Well, we see here where it is the church and those, amen, where it is that they're doing things against God and also the people of God. But we also see where it is that God sent him, sent him out to retrieve her, amen, and bring her back, amen. Continue to speak a word, amen, to a, continue to show compassion, amen, and glory to God. And we find out that God is just, amen, in his ways and continue to leave room, amen, for that individual to return, amen, glory to God. But never stop speaking the truth, amen. Never stop giving them that which God has given you and only that which God has given you. Because on many occasions we find out that it becomes hard when we're in our own minds. When we look at Moses, Moses is a good example where it is that when Moses was judging, he said, well, when things get a little heavy, when, look, when things get beyond, look, just bring it to me. We have to remember, even as leaders, amen, sometimes things get a little heavy. We have to take those things to the Lord, amen. The Lord uh, is able, amen. We are not uh, what we call complete in ourselves. We're only complete when we're in submission to God, amen. And we have to hear from God even the more, especially when we have those challenging ones, amen, that uh, refuse the truth, amen. Glory to God. Show compassion. Show love. Just character God. We can't just go get one scripture. It's the whole Bible, amen. It's all that God has given us. It's the character of God, amen, which requires some things a lot of time that we don't like. Uh, we talk about the fruits of the spirit, amen. Somebody go get that scripture, the fruits of the spirit, where we see long suffering, amen. We see, uh, man, we don't want to suffer long, amen. Patience, amen. We talk about character God, amen. Because sometimes it's just as much as it, it is about that individual. It's the same. It has a flow to you before it flow through you. Glory to God. And I'm talking about the word of God. Amen. Any comments on that response? There's no comment. Glory to God on that response. I want to go to the eighth verse. Amen. Can you read the 11th chapter in the eighth verse of Hosea?
Mm -hmm. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? Mm -hmm. How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma? How shall I set thee as Zip Zeboim? Mine heart is turned within me. My repentings are kindled together. Glory to God. We see here Ephraim, man. Who was Ephraim? We know Ephraim, we know here, uh, represented a, a place where we see Joseph's younger son uh, born in Egypt, amen. Uh, we see Ephraim was blessed by Jacob. You can find that in Genesis, the 40th chapter, the first through the 20th verse. And then we look here, the tribe of, uh, of, of, of Joseph, we see here, was split into two, amen, tribes. And we know Ephraim and Manasseh, amen. Those that we see here where Ephraim, we see here uh, in this specific scripture, in script, in number eight, uh, I, I highlighted something. It says, heart is turned within me. What is it saying when it says the heart mm -hmm, is turned within me? How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Admar? How shall I set thee in Zebulun? My heart is turned within me. Amen. That's significant. My heart is turned within me. It is my deepest compassion. Amen. So as not to execute. Amen. That way you're saying not to do that which you deserve. Amen. I'm talking about my compassion for you because sometimes people can do some things. I highlighted that for a reason here in this context because of the last question. Sometimes people can do some things that uh, that you want to give them what they deserve. But uh, thank God, amen, he didn't give us, amen, what we deserve, amen. Can you imagine if God gave us what we deserved, amen? If you could just take a walk on memory lane, amen, don't stay there, don't get stuck, don't start swinging left and right, and don't stay back there with Susie or Joe. What I'm telling you is to take a, I call a walk back on memory lane, amen, just look back on your life and then in a couple instances, just take two or three and say, if God gave me what I really deserve, where would I be today, amen? See, when we can see ourselves, it becomes seemingly easy to deal with others when we see our complicated selves, amen? But when we can't even see ourselves, glory to God. Mm, mm, mm. We see here in this same scripture, it says, my heart is turned within me. It says, my repentings are kindled, glory to God, together. God speaks according to Human modes of thought. Uh -huh. God's seeming uh, changes in accordance with his secret everlasting purpose of love to his people. God loves his creation. Amen. And ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Amen. Amen. There's nothing nobody can do about it. Amen. You might have been an atheist yesterday, but God loves you today. Amen. You might have been a backslider. Amen. Uh, Three years ago, but God loves you, amen, today if you have turned, amen, from your wicked ways, amen, and if you have, you know, say, humbled yourselves and you have, you know, sought out and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, sir, Brother T.J., I was looking at that, too, and uh, how shall I give thee up? You find God wrestling with his own love for his people. You know, and uh, and God is asking, how can I give thee up? I mean, I birthed you. I, I chose you for such a time. How can I just give thee up? You know, and I was looking at, you know, the fact that even the people, even though they were bent on backsliding, they were doing what was in their nature to do. And I thought about the scripture in Jeremiah 14, I mean, Jeremiah 13 and 23 that mm -hmm. says, can an Ethiopian change his skin or can a leopard uh, his spot? Then may you also do good that is accustomed to do evil. We can't do good that's accustomed to evil. It's not in our nature. The, you know, it's, I heard you use that word Earl, on my way here. It's been imputed in us, you know, that sin been imputed in us. So it's hard for us to do what is right because it's in our nature, you know. And so, you know, no matter how hard we try, it's impossible for one to change their character, even if they would try very hard. We can't change ourselves. You know, and everything else. So just like a leper can't change his spot, it is used to explain the idea that no one can change their innate nature. We can't do that, you know. And so this is God crying out to his children, you know, uh, how shall I give thee up? I just can't give thee up, you know. And I look at that as God having an investment in us all. 
Amen. God has an investment in us all. Amen. And we find out that God, we see here, he's not a man, amen, that he should lie. Go to Genesis, the 12th chapter, glory to God, the first and the second verse, amen. Then we're going to go to Romans, the fourth and the 16th verse, amen, to address, amen, what was just said. Genesis, the 12th chapter, the first and the second verse, it says, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, uh-huh. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Well, we understand here that God never goes, amen, against his promise. Glory to God. Amen. We see that God, when God makes a promise, he makes a promise, amen, that he's going to keep. So even though, amen, we see that they had done some things, amen, but God had made a promise, amen, glory to God. Romans, the fourth chapter and the 16th verse says what? Therefore, it is of faith, amen, it says, uh -huh, that it might be by grace, mm -hmm, key words there, to the end to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is father of us all. Well, we understand that same promise, amen, is extended to us today, amen. Not just the one that was up under the law, not just to the circumcised, to the Gentiles as well. Because Romans 10 and 9 says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, uh-huh, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, is that thou shalt be saved. We see here that that same promise, amen, extends to us today, amen. We see the unconditional promise, amen, of God, amen. There are some things that are conditional, but that's one that's not conditional. Glory to God. Go to the ninth verse. The ninth verse says what? I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man. Uh, we just talked about God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Once in the midst of thee, uh -huh, and I will not enter into the city. Instead of carrying out God's fierce anger to the fullest, we see God compassion uh -huh, will be aroused, amen, amen, glory to God, to the benefit, uh, amen, of the, the inhabitants, amen, of Israel. Uh -huh. Say the burning flame of God's anger will be replaced as it were by the fire of what? His compassion. God has compassion for us, amen. Amen. But it requires for us to do things and that God's compassion be mindful, does not exempt you, amen, from judgment. It does not exempt you from chastisement, amen. Glory to God. I'm talking about his compassion. God mercy rules. He says, I will not execute my burning anger of my wrath. Judgment must take, much, much, must take its course, but it will be tempered with mercy, amen. God will punish but not exterminate, amen. I read earlier, man, you see here today, people a lot of time they have what we call no affection for one another, amen. They just want to exterminate each other, amen. We see here where sometime today, folks, man, they're just fierce, amen. They have no love for one another, amen. Just want to destroy each other. But I see here, thank God that he's not like man. Think about if God was like man. Think about it. If the God that we serve had no compassion for us, amen, you just look at yourself. You see, <laughs> if God dealt with you the way man deals with, with you, let me tell you, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 103, mm -hmm. the Lord is merciful uh -huh. and gracious, slow to anger, and plenty is in mercy. You know, so I will not execute the fearness of my anger. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. The ninth verse says he will not chide. He will not always chide. In other words, he will not always punish. Neither will he keep his anger forever. But the Bible says he has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. As far as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has removed our transgressions 
from him. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. And then Micah 7 and 18, it says, Who is a God like unto thee? And we're not going to find a God like him. And so Micah 7 and 18 says, Who is a God like unto thee that parteth iniquity and passeth by the transgressions of his remnant, of his heritage? He will not, he retaineth not his anger forever. God don't retain his anger forever like some of us do. He don't, uh uh. But he delighteth in mercy. And then it says, He will turn again. He changes his mind. Because if God did not repent for some of the stuff he was going to do, none of us would be here today. It says, he will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. Amen. I love James 1 and 19. James 1 and 19 says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Amen. A lot of us, we anger. Amen. Real easy. Amen. The least little thing get us upset. Amen. Glory to God. I don't care what it is. Look, like you move left. Somebody mad about that, you move right. Somebody mad about that. They say it's too hot. You mad about that. It's cold. You mad about that. Man, let's uh, have some peace. Amen. In Christ. Glory to God. Let's go to the, the 10th chapter, the correction, the uh, Hosea 11th chapter and the 10th verse. Amen. It says, uh-huh. 11 and 10 reads, they shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. We see here in the 10th verse, it's a wonderful verse here because we see here, it implies that God's children would what? Repent. Uh-huh. They would repent and walk according to his statutes, amen. Seek God and not idols, amen, means they will follow God, amen, and not their own desires, amen. A lot of times we can get caught up in our own desires, amen. I'm talking about his. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking about us can get caught up in our own desires, amen. And I love it. He said he shall what? Roar, signifying what we see, a, a signal, amen, a message to turn back, amen, from their backsliding state amen like a line you had a comment okay we see here it says shall tremble what do it mean when it says shall tremble shall flock in eager uh-huh uh-huh agitation of haste amen they shall tremble amen uh, from the west amen Israel continues to use all forms of deceit and violence in pursuit of power. Do we see that today where it is that, you know, I'm talking about, we're talking about Israel here. I'm talking about the church we see here. We use all forms, all manner of things. One thing bothers me a lot of times, people say, well, they do it out there. I don't, man, don't compare the Lord with what they do out there. Amen. They can do what they want to do out there. They'll use that in justification for the things that they do in the house of God. Well, they, well, I don't care what the government's doing. What is God's doing? God is different from the government. God, God is not your local government, amen. He put them in place, amen. But we find out that I'm talking about the mind of God, amen. It's not the mind of man, amen. One that's submitted to God. If your government find themselves a born again believer, I'm talking about say sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about walking as a saint. I mean, a true Christian, we find out I can maybe go along with you. But don't use what the culture does as a justification to do it in God's house. That's gross, quite frankly. Amen. Because you're comparing God to the devil. All right. Amen. And the last time I checked, I don't serve the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to John, the eighth chapter, the 31st verse. It says, it's a, If the Son of Man shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Stop allowing people to put you in bondage. If you're free, you're free. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah, we have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, from the audience, um, they would like to know, how do we know when God is speaking to his people directly? How do we know when God is speaking to his people directly? The Bible says, God says, my sheep knows my voice. Glory to God. Amen. I say, if you were born again, believer, amen, and you're communicating with God, let me bring it you know, to a level that we all understand here. 
We find out a baby, amen, can be in a grocery store. I'm talking about one that's four or five years old. It could be a whole lot of people in that grocery store. And that mother can be two hours old and might have missed a baby. But when that baby hears the mother or the father's voice, you'll find out that out of all the voices in there, they know their parents' voice, amen. When it is because, see, that child from the time of birth has spent Time we find out with the parents, amen. So you can go in the daycare center when you go and pick your child up from the daycare, and there's a whole lot of parents going there. Uh huh. But when they call, they say your mother walk in and they say, Joe, you know that's your mama, amen. You know that ain't nobody else. But it's just, we see the same principle here applies with the Lord. When you're spending time with God, amen, when you're spending time in the word, amen, you begin to know and learn to know his voice when you hear it, amen. But a lot of time, if we're not really spending time with God, and I'm talking about not just picking it up right before we start Sunday school. I'm talking about picking your word up, amen, during the week, amen. I'm talking about praying and speaking with God all day long, amen. You begin to hear his voice in the midst of the noise, amen. You begin to hear his voice in the midst of the crowd, amen. All the chaos that's going on around you, amen. When you run into things on your job and people get on your nerves, amen. When it is that the culture, I'm talking about that old man that's on the inside of you that wants to start roaring like a lion, you can still hear the voice of God, amen. And it's not overwhelmed amen as I talk about John John says and says uh he was on the island of Patmos and the Bible tells me that he heard a voice as if it was a trumpet the trumpet signified authority you begin to only listen to those things that have authority amen but if you're not used to hearing the Lord's voice because you haven't developed a relationship that thing can become seemingly what I call hard or, or mystical or whatever the case may be. But there's nothing mystical. There's nothing hard about it. You just have to develop a relationship by spending time with the Lord. And if you don't hear his voice, we call it literally. Uh, you can pick that word up because he's giving it to us all. Amen. Um, speaking of what you're talking about, when you have to have a relationship, it says in Jeremiah 29, 29 and 13, it says, and you will seek for me and find me when you search for me when you search for me with all your heart and the only way that you will be able to search for him is if you stay in your word and if you pray then you will be able to know when God is talking to you when God is speaking to you it's just like if you go and you try to sit between, sit, sit in front of a television the only way you'll be able to see that television see what's on that television is if you turn it on with the power button right mm -hmm. so if you are not reading your word and if you're not praying trying to listen to God you're not going to know who it is that's talking to you when you're trying to get a word from God unless you got that that communication amen glory amen. to God and so uh in line with that if we as a body of Christ understand his voice do we act accordingly as a body of believers uh, so I, I, I look at this how first of all how do we know when God is speaking you spot on you said my sheep know my voice and a the stranger they will not follow but then going back to what Sister Wright was saying too, and you were saying, uh, echoing what you were saying, we have to get into the word because most time when God speaks to us, it's going to be through his word. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why 2 Timothy 2 and 15 encourage us to study, to show ourselves approved under God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And you remember a few Fridays back, I taught knowing, the, recognizing the voice of God from your own voice and from the voice of the devil. You know, and so we have to understand because everything that comes across that pulpit not come from God. From God Amen. You know, so we have to get into the word Amen. so we know exactly what God is saying. So if we as a body of Christ understand his voice, the question on the floor, I'm going to get that back to you, uh, uh, Brother Superintendent. If we as a body of Christ understand his voice, do we act accordingly as a body of Christ? Absolutely, amen. If we're to, absolutely, if we're to find ourselves, you say, as a body. So what we're saying is, one, and I, and I love it, we're talking about unity, amen. There's complete unity 
in the spirit because we know that there's no division in God. Amen. We never seen Jesus show himself outside of the father. Amen. There's only one that's good. Amen. We have to find ourselves submitted to God in all things that we do. We call complete unity. Amen. In the spirit. Amen. Not in flesh. Not in man. I want to go back to something and you hit it a little bit just then. Because what happens is if you don't read your word. Amen. And you only receive it from me. <laughs> what happens is instead of you looking for the Lord, you start looking for me. Amen. I need God needs you. I need you. I encourage you. Amen. To read your word. Amen. So that when we come together, amen, we can agree with one another in the spirit. Amen. And now we find out back to the question that was just answered. We find out now collectively we find out that we can find ourselves in right relationship with the Lord serving him. Glory to God in the purpose. Amen. For his glory. Amen. We're going to try to cover one or two more before we close out here. Glory to God. Any other comments? Amen. Amen. We just covered the 10th verse where it says they shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion when he shall roar. Then uh -huh, the children shall tremble from the west. Amen. Glory to God. It is a wonderful thing. Amen. I want to move on over. We're going to go because we, we don't we, we're, we're running out of time here this morning for the Sunday school lesson. Um, but I encourage you, amen, to continue to read this lesson. We're going to try to cover a few more of the scriptures here. And likewise, if there's any questions, please go ahead and ask those questions now so we can uh, start addressing them before we get to the close of this session. Amen. I love this here. I want to go to uh, the second verse of the 12th chapter. Amen. As a matter of fact, well, let's go ahead and start with the first. Let's not let's not skip over the word. Amen. We're going to get as far as we can get. Let's go ahead. The 12th chapter, the first verse says what? Ephraim feedeth on wind mm -hmm. and followeth after the east wind. Mm -hmm. He daily increases lies and desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians. And mm -hmm. go ahead. And oil is carried into Egypt. The Lord hath also a controversy with Judah, mm -hmm. and will punish Jacob according to his way. According to his doings will he recompense recompense him. Amen. Glory to God. So we see here, what does it mean in the first verse where it says, feedeth on the wind? Amen. Amen. We got Pope folks, they eat all eat at every table. Except the Lord's table, amen. You can't get a word unless you get it from somebody. You know what I'm saying? You haven't spent one moment with the Lord and don't understand or act like you can't realize why it is that you're not having discernment. See, we see here, feedeth on the wind, amen. Go to Proverbs, the 15th chapter and the 14th verse. But we see feeding out the wind here represents where it is that one following after vain ob objects, such as alliances with idolaters and their idols. Amen. Men make a whole lot of things that idol. The only idol, I would say, as a matter of fact, is that only God that you should serve is the living God. Amen. Amen. The God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Go to Proverbs 15, chapter 14, verse, what does it say? And it reads, The heart of him that hath understanding seeth knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So we find out that if you really want knowledge, seek God, seek the word. Amen. Stop seeking after us. That's why I say we got all these self-help books. The self-help books are great. They're wonderful. Amen. I get it. I mean, it appeases your, appeases your flesh and kind of gets you where you need to be and get you by. And you, and you, but God is more than a feeling. Amen. If you remember, God is more than than a feeling, amen. We can't go back to business as usual, amen. God is more than a feeling, amen. God is more, as we end here, than a vain object or a vain practice, amen. God is more than a feeling. This is a wonderful lesson we call it, see here, return to love and justice, amen. There's a lot more that we can get out of this lesson, amen. But in respect to time, amen, glory to God, we're going to end here. I encourage you to go back in this lesson, amen, in Hosea, the 11th chapter, glory to God, and the 12th chapter, amen, and but go back to the first chapter and specifically through the fourth chapter and read, really read about Gama, amen. You see Hosea and what we call a parallel between that man and his wife, and we see the church and God, glory to God. 
Yes, sir. And just before you close, I was looking at that verse, and I look at it as a body, from a body of uh, believers as well. The wind, as you mentioned, signifies Israel's pursuit of vain and fleeting pleasures. And how many of us is chasing after the wind? Amen. False hopes, false promises. Mm -hmm. How many of us chasing the wind? Amen. You know, something that's not tangible. Amen. You know, and everything else. So this signifies the body of Christ, you know, uh, chasing after vain and fleeting pleasures, you know. And so uh, we thank God for that. And uh, before you close, I uh, want to know when you reference self-help books, do you, that include the books written by pastors? Amen. So I'm going to tell you, the, the pastor's book, the, the pastors, the books that are out there by the pastors, they still is not the Bible. The, pa the books, that they're great. I said they're great. I'm not going to knock your pastor's book and the discernment that God has given him and God has given him. But when you see the Bible, the Bible is absolute. There's a lot of commentaries out there. It's no different than the commentaries that we have. But if you notice, if you're really doing your study, you'll see that a lot of the commentaries, you'll see that it'll have one view over here and another view over there. Well, we see here, but it needs to line up line by line, precept by precept, according to the word of God. So the, your pastor's book don't replace the Bible. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I love my pastor. My pastor's here right now. I say, my, my pastor, he's not Jesus. Amen. All right. So let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get it together. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that where it needs to be cut. Amen. I'm not talking about your pastor. I'm talking about the question that was asked. Amen. In the context of a self-help book. Those books are great, but those books are not to replace the Bible. Glory to God. We thank you. Amen. No, I've been changed. Glory to God. This was a wonderful Sunday school lesson. We're going to go ahead and end. We have the end here. God bless you. We love you. I enjoyed this lesson. Return to love and justice. Amen. We should all make. Thank you for attending this awesome service. The women of Be Ye Holy Ministries are hosting our Breaking Free Revival, featuring Evangelist Frazier of Topeka, Kansas, from 24 June to 26 June at 7.30 p.m. nightly, culminating on 28 June at 11.30 a.m. Please join us via Facebook or YouTube be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live. Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again and may God bless you.